and foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord, and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it, and hold fast to my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain, and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Isaiah chapter 56, verses 6 and 7. This is my charbroil grill uh, in partial disassembly. I had watched another video, and I thought that maybe my valves were, were frozen, but when I got uh, this apart, um, I figured out that the valves are actually working properly, but these knobs, um, because the grill got overheated, these knobs are fused, are fused to the shaft there. And if you look at this one here, you can see how it's kind of misshapen. And uh, probably what was causing the, the friction uh, was when the valve or when the handle was running against this plate here and it was catching and not turning properly. So um, now I've got to figure out a way to get these things off of there without destroying the, the valves. So, okay, so what seems to be working is I put my leather gloves on here and I hold this with one and kind of put it up against there. And then I just kind of rock this back and forth. And it eventually comes off. Just like that. You can see all of these are melted and misshapen. So somebody left the grill on full blast and it melted these things. And I did have one here on my end burner that wasn't uh, exposed to the heat when comparing one to the other these are kind of all misshapen because that was uh, melted in there like that um, it was causing my my knobs when they were on here to it was just you know, some of them were spinning all the way around and so you know they weren't making they weren't even turning the valve so anyway that was the problem since i started taking this thing apart without uh, videoing it i'll uh, kind of try to show you how it goes together this pipe here has um, is where the valves mount and uh, so the gas then comes through this flexible tube which sticks in here like this so if you look under here this uh, fitting right here is where this flexible tube goes on and the screws right on there like that and there are four screws on each side that hold this piece on those four and those uh, mate with these holes right here this one and then those two So the valves fit on here, uh, go through the hole, and then they line up with the pipe, like so, and then these screws go through the hole and thread into the valve.
so that is not all the way screwed down because it's hard to screw it from this angle so I'm just going to take it back off of there and and put it uh, <coughs> and screw it down from the bottom side and but this uh, little pilot hole for the propane goes into this thing right there and I, I've got the couple of the screws in there just to hold it in place here while I'm working on this but uh, anyway so I'll have to take those screws out and then when I get all these valves mounted I'll slide all the valves into the place at the same time and then I'll put the screws in okay and it's probably best to put this igniter on before you put the valves on because otherwise you won't get it in there so that fits through the hole here and then it's held on by this little plastic uh, nut. And actually you should slide this retainer piece on there before you tighten that up. This has got a little slot in it goes around it. Tighten up that screw. So that's secure. Install my valves. Okay, and the igniter battery then goes right in there. And you screw the top back on. And next we're going to tighten up the valves. Okay, and so you want to make sure that these, the end of the valve is going inside the tube there, coming out of the Thing and all the way down, they need to be lined up before you tighten anything up. And then we'll just come in here and and you might be able to tighten these up before you put it together, but. I was just a little unsure how the alignment was going to work, so I played it a little more cautious. Okay, so now I'm installing the knobs. Um, you see how my uh, little beauty shields here are kind of also distorted a little bit from the heat from before, so I'm getting a little bit of friction sound on the knobs as they turn. But they still go back to the right positions. It stops where it's supposed to stop and everything. So what I'm doing when I put these on, just kind of supporting this from the back a little bit, lining up the spot there, working it down on there. And it stops where it wants to stop. It's still scraping on that back piece a little bit, but it's... Uh, Functional. I think they had these available too. So if you want to go ahead and order those as well. Okay, so one thing I want to make sure is that all of these are free. 
to move in and out. And one of them already I've had to adjust because it wasn't free. You can see this one doesn't do that. So what I did was I took the, the handle back off and I loosened up the ring here and uh, was able to just not tighten it quite all the way. Okay, the other pieces that I took out, and these are kind of rusty too. I didn't go ahead and replace them because they weren't falling apart. But uh, these just... Put them on there backwards. These fit on like this. Actually, this one doesn't go here, it goes down here. And I was actually able to find some. Uh, Stainless steel racks for this that were a little bit less expensive than the replacement ones from Charboil. Plus, hopefully they won't uh, corrode like the other ones did. They came with a set of three, uh, so I could actually use a fourth one, but we don't use this searing burner too much anyway, so I'm just going to put one of the old ones back on there and if we did want to use um, if we did want to use this burner for uh, for cooking we could always cover this with foil or something so there you have it and this is just the uh, oil uh, grease trough thing that goes underneath and uh, so we'll have to put the tank on and fire it up and see if it works. Okay, another thing that I bought was uh, some of these plastic inserts. And those actually, uh, this one's still got threads in it, if you can see that. Uh, but the ones that I have, um, they don't have threads in it anymore. And so what that's for is those, it, it goes in the bottom of these uh, of these legs here uh, but it fits in there just like that and it it's supposed to hold those wheels in there but uh, both of mine on this side have have come out and they you know if you lift up the grill they'll just fall out on the ground so uh, I've got these things so that uh, that won't happen and one other valuable thing to know is that this top one you don't have to remove because uh, the rubber doesn't come up that high. So that'll make it a lot more stable if you don't take both of those out. Just take the lower one out and uh, that, that will hold the, and that goes through the plastic and it holds the, holds the uh, plastic bracket in there firmly. And that's a good picture of the wheel not in the right position. Okay, to get these things out of here, I'm just taking a screwdriver and pounding them out. And you can see how all the threads are gone and just sticks right in there so we'll screw this one in the new one and hopefully it'll be a lot more stable that's the new one got it installed screwed it in I put this part in a vise and then just screwed the plastic on by hand so I didn't overstress it okay I uh, also found that the 
grease tray was uh, completely rusted in two there so I went ahead and, and uh, purchased another one this uh, plate here is supposed to mount like that so I'll move that from the rusty one to the new one So there's just those four screws that hold that on there and that's just a heat shield to keep the tank from getting too hot. Okay, and this is uh, where the grease tray goes. Just slides in like that. And when you get it in there all the way, it'll lock against these pins, those pins right there. So now we'll actually do a job of catching the grease, and then this little catch pin just fits right in there like that. And then your tank goes here, so it's shielded from the heat. Well, the grill is working very nicely. Uh, all the burners are are working, and uh, all is good. Thanks for watching.